Hey everybody, my name is Chris and this is my shop partner, Uth, and in this video, I'm gonna be building a set of truck bed drawers. Now, I built this same set over five years ago now. It's in the back of my truck, still works perfectly fine, but I really wanted to make a nice quality video and a set of plans to share with you all. You can find a link to those plans which are on my website, down in the description. They'll let you build the drawers to fit any size truck bed you have or even SUVs. And since it's November, which means it's Men's Health Awareness Month, I thought I'd have a little bit of fun, support the whole Movember thing, and rock a mustache for this video. So if you want to see me shave my beard with a plane blade, stick around to the end. We have a lot of fun with that. It's pretty crazy. Don't try that at home. And a big thank you to Lowe's for sponsoring this video. Let's get started with the build. So I have a standard six and a half foot bed in my truck and I'm going to make my drawers around six foot three inches to give me a little bit of room for the T-handles that I'll put on at the end. Now I made a straight line guide for my circular saw and I'll clamp it down to the sheet of plywood on my line and I'll get a really nice straight cut that way. Now this is the bottom piece and I'm using half inch plywood for both the top and the bottom and if you plan on putting super heavy stuff on top you might want to go with a three quarter inch piece. Next, I'm going to lay out and countersink screw holes for the frame. I'll be using 2x8s to make my frame, but you can make the drawers taller by using 2x10s or even 2x12s. That's going to be up to you and what you plan on keeping in the drawers as well as how much room you want on top of the drawers. And I'm going to put a screw about every 6 inches. Then I'm going to cut my 2x8s to make the frame. A full four foot piece will go along the back and then I'll just place my longer pieces in place to get my mark that way. And I use my speed square to give myself a nice square cut. Now you will see me use a variety of tools in this video and that's because I wanted to show to you that this can be made with pretty much whatever you have. You don't necessarily need to have a table saw or a miter saw to build these. Use whatever you have and feel most comfortable with. There's always a way to get it done. And then I just screw the frame in place. Now I'm going to make the drawer bottoms. I'm using quarter inch ply for these and I'll set the sheet on top of the frame to get my layout. I'm going to cut these about a quarter inch shorter than the frame because later on I'll add stop blocks to the back of the inside of those drawers. For the drawer width, I measure the frame opening and then subtract half an inch. That's going to give me a quarter inch gap on each side, which is what we want, and you'll see why a little bit later on. Now I'll use my table saw to rip some 1x8 pieces of pine down to 6 inches wide to make my drawer sides. If you don't have a table saw, you could just use your circular saw, but I wanted to show some different methods. Using the drawer bottom as reference, I mark and cut the long sides. Then I'll measure the inside distance and cut the front and back. Now a lot of plywood comes with a good and bad side, and I wanted the good side, which is also the smoother side, down on these drawers as they'll be sliding on glides. So I'll flip the drawer bottom over and countersink all the holes from the underside, but before I attach the sides, I'm going to put down some carpet. This stuff is really cheap indoor-outdoor carpet that works perfect for this, and it keeps your stuff from banging all around. So I rough cut the carpet to shape, then spray some spray adhesive to keep it from moving around while I screw down the sides. I also got a really good tip over in my Instagram page where a follower told me that I could just use short staples to hold the carpet in place. And while we're on the topic of Instagram, I have a link down in the description. Feel free to go check me out there and keep up to date with what I'm doing in between these project videos. And if you end up liking this video and you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified when I post new videos. With the sides attached, it's really easy to trim the carpet. Now I want to strengthen the drawers a little bit, and I'm going to do this by taking a 4x4 and cutting it diagonally and then screwing that into the corners. This will also add some extra material that I'll need for my locking mechanism that I'll make later on. Okay. 
And again, there are several different ways to get any process done. Then I like to take a sander and round over all the edges. This will ensure the drawers slide in and out really nicely. Now to make the drawer glides. I ordered a 1 foot by 4 foot sheet of 3 16 UHMW plastic to make the glides. I cut the sheet into 1 inch strips that I'll use for the glides. UHMW has very low friction, is very wear resistant, and it's self lubricates. It's the perfect material for this application. Then I use a drill press to get the exact depth on some countersunk screw holes. You can use a handheld drill here, but since these are such thin strips, it can be really easy to accidentally drill straight through them. Since the drawers will be riding on these, you definitely need the screw heads to be below the surface. I like 3 16 because it's thick enough that I can still get a small half inch screw into, but it's not too thick where I lose drawer space. Then to help the drawer slide even better, I add some wax to the underside of the drawer and then give them a little weight test with oots. Then I add a couple guides to the sides of the frame and the back of the drawers. This is why I made the drawers a half inch narrower than the opening. And then I'll add spacer blocks to the back of the drawers so that the drawers will push in flush. Now using the plywood cutoffs from the bottom, I'm going to make the drawer fronts. I want these to be slightly shorter than the full height of the drawer so that they'll slide under the overhang that I create when I put the top on and also not too low that they catch on the tailgate when you extend them. I'll line them up and hold them in place with clamps and then just screw them to the drawer. Next I'm going to work on the locking mechanism. Now I just went down to my local truck topper shop and was able to buy T-handles with matching keys to the T-handles that are already on my topper. Then I just use this little extra part that it had to mark out the hole locations and then I'll drill those. So these little T-handles come with these little arms for locking your topper windows, but they're not very strong so I'm going to fabricate something just a little bit better. I make these little marks every one inch to tell me where I want to bend. Then I'm going to drill a hole in the center and then out on each wing, and you'll see why in a second. Then I'm going to file the center hole square so that it fits over the square shank of that T-handle. Then I'm going to cut off the arm of that little locking piece that comes with the T-handle and use it to secure that new fabricated piece in place. Now I want to attach some quarter inch steel rod to that piece that I made so that it will extend through the drawers and into the sides of the frame for a super strong method of locking. Now I'm going to put a 90 degree bend in one end, drill a small hole through it and then add a cotter pin to secure it in place. This is the exact thing that I did to my original set of drawers that I built nearly six years ago and I've never had a single problem with this mechanism. Next I line up where I want the rod to come through the sides of the drawer to line up with the T-handle. Now first drill a hole that's the next size up from quarter inch and go all the way through the drawer. Then from the inside of the drawer I'll drill a half inch hole about halfway through. The rod doesn't travel in a straight line in order to lock so you have to enlarge that inside to give it room to pivot as it extends. 
It also requires a little bit of filing and bending of the rod to get it tuned up just right. But once it is, you'll never have to mess with it again and someone will have to take an ax to the drawers to get them open. Then I'll cut the rod flush with the side of the drawer when it's in the unlocked position. Okay, so now I need to drill a hole in the frame that matches up with this rod. And I'm gonna show you a little trick that my grandpa showed me, but it involves some lipstick. So I'm gonna have to go get some of that real quick. So you take some lipstick, put it on the surface that you want to transfer the mark, bring this in, shut the drawer, then push it out. And there you can see it made a really nice mark where I need to drill that hole. Now all I need to do is sneak that lipstick back in my wife's drawer and everything will be good. She'll never know. Chris. Then I just add the cotter pins and the locking mechanism is all done. Then I'm going to lay out and install a bunch of different drawer dividers based on what I plan on keeping in my drawers. The way you lay out your drawers is totally going to be up to you. I do recommend putting a board across the front to block items from interfering and jamming up that locking mechanism. Then I just add the top. I'll cut the top about three quarter inches longer than the frame to give it a nice overhang over the drawers. And again, I'm gonna add a screw about every six inches. Now the front edge of these drawers get a lot of abuse from stuff getting thrown in all the time, so I'm going to add a small half inch aluminum angle to the front edge. Now I decided to route a small channel so that it'll sit flush, and I experimented using rivets to secure it, and surprisingly they worked really well. Sweet. Got a nice durable edge now. For the top, I'm going to be using that rubberized coating called Flex Seal. It's basically like tar and it'll give it a really durable, waterproof coating. I have also used patio and walkway paint before that worked really good, and you can even go and get it coated with professional truck bed rhino liner if you want. Then I add a couple of heavy duty handles because you really don't want to be pulling this thing out and pushing it in by the T-handle lock. Now I'm going to add a couple metal brackets to the sides so that I can add some extra pieces of painted plywood to give it a nice flush front once it's sitting in the bed of the truck. The other nice thing is that now it gives me four nice little cubbies in front of and behind each wheel well. I don't understand why this is, but the tailgate on my newer truck angles up higher than the bed. It's not on the same plane, so I have to add these half inch spacers to the bed so that the drawers have enough clearance to clear the tailgate. My older truck didn't have this problem, so you may or may not have to do this. 
Then to keep the drawers from sliding around, I use four screws through the bottom of the drawer into the bed of the truck. Now make sure there aren't any wires where you're screwing and also use a screw that's just barely long enough to make it through. And here you can see that the tailgate of the truck will actually support the weight of the drawers. Did I mention don't do this at home? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right.